Welcome back. Well, as I'm looking at Audie, who seems to be trying to sleep on the power cord to the camera, I have no confidence in how long this is going to last. Well, as you know from last week, we were not able to do all of our Bedford shopping trip in one video. Well, so we're finishing up today. Hey, you know, life happens. So while you are watching this, I'm probably back at Bedford again. So we'll see. Um, I have a cat sitting on the power cord to the camera right now and I'm thinking I need to go move him out of the way before he unplugs the whole thing. I don't know what's wrong with this cat. I have never seen an animal so determined to be like a star. So if the camera is not focused on him, he will unplug it. He's getting very temperamental in his old age. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so let's get started with our Bedford shopping trip. Um, and we are taking this as we have in past videos in chronological order. In other words, you're seeing the things in the same order that I saw them as I went through the store. So we're just picking up where we left off in our trip, looking at our next item. This mirror, and let me back up so I can get it all in the shot. This mirror is not something that's going with me. $95. Um, it's a uh, Chippendale walnut. Uh, mirrors like this can be very good buys because that particular style dates back to the 18th century. And if you can find an old mirror. This one is $95. If you can find an 18th century mirror for $95, you're getting yourself a good deal. The downside is they've been reproducing that style ever since. Um, we're going to turn this around and take a look at it, so hold on. All right, here is the back of that mirror. And there are a lot of touches that indicate it might be an older mirror. Um, it's certainly not a modern reproduction, I can tell you that right now. But when you look at little pieces of wood uh, that are backing the applied ornamentation, um, the mirror is held in with nails. This is cardboard. So we know that we're not looking at 18th century. Um, definitely antique, no question about that. But not for $95, I'm going to pass on this. So what did you think of that? Uh, those are beautiful old mirrors. Um, that mirror was old. I could tell that the glass was not new. It was not, however, as old as I, I would like if I were going to buy that piece. I believe that particular Georgian style mirror is probably a late 19th, early 20th century. These pieces go back to the 18th century and the mirrors will look ex virtually exactly the same the same style 
has been popular uh, for you know, 250 years, uh, seriously. It's like a Georgian style mirror. There, sometimes they're called pier mirrors. They're just beautiful little pieces. Very nice Chippendale design. Uh, and we talked about Chippendale. Oh my goodness, it must be six or eight months ago. But there are ways you can tell if it's old. And of course, that's why I turned it over. The cardboard in the back of the glass was telling me. It was not old. An old mirror, there would have been a wooden panel. Um, is it possible that somebody took out the glass, put in new glass, in other words, changed out the mirror, and got rid of the old wood panel? Not likely. I would have seen other signs of age. That was old. Um, that was an antique. I'm very sure of that. But was it one of the big ticket antiques. Was it an antique pre-revolutionary pre war American antique? No. No. Afraid not. But keep in mind that if you find one of those pieces, that's what it's going to look like. So flip it over. You don't want to see that cardboard. You want to see the rough sawn wooden paneling. Hmm. And if you do, then buy it for the $95. And when Antiques Roadshow comes to your hometown, you take it. And then they're going to tell you, oh, look, and it belonged to Aaron Burr. So keep that in mind. All right, let's see what else. Oh, dear. Russian plates. Well, let's take a quick look at these because we've talked about this before and I'm seeing them all over the place. So, quick peek. I wonder if you will recall several weeks ago I stopped and grabbed some pictures of some heavily painted Russian plates. These are more plates from that, so there we go needed to get rid of the glare. More plates from that set. These are collector pieces. I believe we've probably got a date in here somewhere, but I believe it was the 1990s. Let me check. Yes, 1994. They are not old. They are not worth much. They are probably not worth the $12 they're asking for them, but they are turning up. And if you see them, unless you can get a really good deal, I would walk away. They are just not as valuable as you might think. Well, I'm seeing them everywhere. And I want you to be aware of the fact that these pieces are not worth much. If they are being sold at $25. If that's the asking price now, you need to keep in mind that the original sales price was probably around $30. There's a range. They, they had, some of them were sold for as little as $25, as much as $35. So I'm saying $30. Selling for $25 now the antique dealers are not going to get this price because the plates are very clearly marked from, God, what was it, 1990s? Um, I think they started selling them in 1988 and sold them for about six or eight years, so right through the mid-90s. Russian fairy tale plates. Um, obviously, Firebird is a big deal in this. They're not selling. Um, the only way you are going to even get as much money as you originally paid for them when they came out is if you have them with the box and the certificate of authenticity and yada, 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 and you throw them up on eBay and you get super lucky. Ordinarily, the plates are selling for very little. Um, 
you know, 10, 12 dollars, even boxed. And that is because people have to pay shipping on top of it. This is not anything anybody is buying because it's collectible. This is something people are buying because they think it's cute, ordinarily because they are of Russian descent, and they just want it as a knickknack. They are buying this the same way the rest of us would go out and buy a mixing bowl at Target. Really, that's all it is. There is no collectible value in these pieces, but they are showing up like crazy. So I wanted to just give you the information on that. At $25, you'll take a loss. All right, next up, um, and this was, uh, this was interesting. So let's take a peek at this. So I am back in this little booth in the far corner and we've come in here before. I got some rice porcelain here. They have a lot of Asian porcelain, most of which is alarmingly overpriced. But look what I found. I found a box of, here, let me get that right side up for you. I found a box of salt and pepper shakers for $20. Looks like I've got about four or five pair in there and they are all reasonably nice. So they are coming home with me. All right, that was uh, that little booth in the far back corner of Bedford. And I go there and I've been able to buy things there from time to time. They have some lovely Chinese pieces asking way too much but they have a very nice dish and if they lower their price a little that might come home with me it might become Audie's new cat food dish I don't know but that little bowl a uh, little box of salt and pepper shakers let's see if we can get this without too much glare on it the nice little butterfly design very heavily gilded extremely cute what is that that's an upside down it's butterflies all over it very pretty there's a pair of these there were three pair um, two just like this and a third pair uh, that was simpler that are gilded very heavily gilded like this and then this pair which is sterling and marked accordingly. Those salt and pepper shakers were a good buy, uh, a very good buy, and I, I'm not going to have any difficulty offloading them. Somebody needs to explain this to me, how it is that these folks can be so reasonable with sterling salt and pepper shakers and yet their prices on Chinese plates are like crazy high they are just wishful thinking high I don't get it somebody needs to explain that to me all right anyway good bye um, I think the, the little butterflies are my favorite of those but in general really nice little stash and there was another box that I might go back for too so let's see what is next um, oh yes speaking of salt and pepper shakers the next booth I went to just beautiful art deco set of salt and pepper shakers take a look well, I just came across this really interesting set of salt and pepper shakers. Now, they are lusterware, orange and blue, with turquoise, yellow, and silver. Because they are lusterware, the color is not showing up really true to hue. So that's why I'm telling you what color they are. 
very art deco, $9.50 for the pair. There's some wear on the top, on the silver. Still, I think it's a very good deal. Art Deco salt and pepper shakers sell like crazy. So seriously, is that terrific or what? Um, that I, I love those Art Deco shakers. They sell like crazy. Everybody wants a little bit of Deco in their life. That's one of the things that I've realized. No difficulty whatsoever in offloading Deco pieces. None. And then that was, oh yes, here, another film clip for you. The Art Deco salt and pepper shakers are not $9.50 after all. Ooh, 20% off. So, much better deal. So, better and better. Now, let's, let's take a look at this next piece. This next piece was just something very inexpensive. I just couldn't resist. So let's take a peek. Well, look what I just found. This is a little celluloid change holder. You slide your coins in. It, it all works. They have springs that will allow you to just scoot a coin off and take it out. Two dollars. You know I'm not passing it up. Not for two dollars. And it's a cute and interesting piece of another era when the, I'm guessing, maybe two dollars worth of change that would have been held in a piece like this was sort of a big deal. Also, we've got a pair of salt and pepper shakers here for five dollars and they're coming with me too. I put the change in it so you can see what it's supposed to look like when it's full. And this is how it works. You just put your finger on a little tiny bit of pressure and the coin slides out. Um, actually, it takes more pressure to get it back in there, but this used to be a very popular sort of um, a, a, a gimmick sort of thing. Uh, you know, you just, it would hold your change you could easily access it. Uh, you can see exactly where the change is. Things like this never caught on. They were more novelty items, you know, gifts. Um, but there is a huge collector's market for things just like this. The celluloid is in good condition. Um, it's aged. It's gotten a patent on it. I'm sure it was a lot lighter than this originally. But the whole thing works. So I was glad to find a piece like that. When I was going toward the front of the store, this is about the point where I was starting to think about leaving, I saw something that I do want to talk about. Um, and we're going to take a look. Have periodically touched on black Americana as a collecting category in the past. As you can see, it's a thing. Um, some people are uncomfortable with it. Uh, the last person I knew who collected it was a professor of black history, and he used these pieces as teaching aids in his class. But I guess this is one of those to each his own. Now, this is called Black Americana. And this is something that makes a lot of people really uncomfortable. And this is to each his own. I, I don't really have much of an opinion on it one way or another. It's It, it was never a particular interest of mine. Um, I certainly don't need to tell you that I don't have any 
cultural affinity with the subject but it's something that is out there it's part of our history and we're going to see it some of these items can be very valuable when you find very valuable items then I don't know I guess people who have real serious moral reservations about it might not want to profit from something like this my position is to each his own I it's not something that I'm interested in in any particular way but I did want you to see it's out there it's a thing uh, you find pieces like this some people are just uncomfortable with the idea of reselling them as I say the only collection that uh, that I've really seen recently anyway was from a professor of black history so do I feel it was somehow inappropriate that these items had fallen into his hands no not at all he uses them as teaching aids in his class he discusses um, you know 20th century perceptions about African Americans it's it's what he teaches do I feel there's anything wrong with this no no not in the least but as I say it's not something that that I am particularly into it's, uh, it's not something I trade in but it's a legitimate collector's market for those of you who are interested in this it can be highly profitable and I know a lot of you are not so just throwing it out there you do what you want with the information my job is to teach you your job is to take that information and do what you please with it you know toss it in the trash if it's of no value to you but it's out there major market a lot of money to be made so um let's take a quick look at our final wolf well i just wandered in to a little booth that i check out occasionally They've got interesting things, but I often find them pretty overpriced. This is an old made in Japan spoon rest. Very interesting. Very, very cute. You can see the painting. Of course, it's Japan and it's got the, uh, the paper sticker. And right here, $5. So you got to know this is coming with me. Little piece. Well, this is a, just a lovely little spoon holder. Good price. Japanese uh, porcelain, again, mid-century. Ah, much better bargain than that gravy separator, don't you think? I do, too. So, finally... At long last, we have moved through um, our Bedford shopping trip. I know, three videos worth. But before we get off this, let me just quickly tell you what is going on with our uh, Shop Spotlight giveaway. We have, as you know, we, we have um, half a dozen vendors who have already sort of bought onto the program. They, they are ready to go. And I am hoping, hoping fingers crossed, to have the information I need to start two of the giveaways this weekend. I'd like to run two together so that our viewers have some choices. You know, in other words, people have shops that specialize in crocheted items or wood carved items. They're, that's very specific. So I want to make sure that people don't say, oh, I just dislike crocheting. It reminds me of grandma. Or people saying, I just dislike wood carving. It reminds me of grandpa. Or whatever they would say. Want to get a little bit of variety. Remember, 
if you are going to enter the giveaway, if, in other words, if, you, if you're looking to receive a prize, you can enter as many giveaways as you want. If we've got one going on uh, with uh, a, a crocheter and one with the woodcarver, you can enter both. Going on next week again, enter both. It's fine. Not a big deal. So, I am very optimistic that we're going to be able to start the giveaways this weekend. All right. So, let me see. What day is today? Today is Friday. Well, I'm hoping for tomorrow, but we'll see. All right. Meantime, take care. Have a fabulous day, and I will see you.